Hi. Uh, what you're looking at here is a, a movie set. For the next few minutes, I'd like to use all of this to, to tell you a little story. It's, uh, well, it's, it's a story about a young father who's searching for some real answers for his family about the purpose of life. Now, whether or not the answers he finds are real or pretend like scenery on a stage, well, that's really up to you to decide. Everything's gonna be fine. That's a big go. Here we go. Is she okay, honey? Oh, she's fine, honey. Go back to sleep. here when she slept over the other night. Did you ever think of that? Then what was Jill doing? Like me. Well, it was in your drawer. I am explaining every single time. Well, who am I supposed to blame? Your mother? I don't want to talk about it. I mean, when it's over, it's over. It's over. So what? What comes next, nobody really knows. The world doesn't make much sense anyway, does it? Does it? I mean, does it, Dad? What are we here for, anyway? Why should I even go on living? I'm afraid, Dad. Jennifer. Help me, Dad. Jennifer! Sandy, what's the matter? What's wrong? Sandy, what's wrong? She's gonna be gone at 20 minutes. And I don't have the answers. What answers? What are you talking about? The answers to the questions she's gonna ask us. I mean, like, who am I? What am I doing here? What is life all about? Honey, she's only a couple of weeks old. Besides, I thought I was the one to worry about things like that. Yeah, but you just can't run away from it. Look. Someday she's gonna need to know the answers to these questions, and it's our job to tell her. And how do you tell her about things that you're not sure of yourself? I don't know. You do what our parents did. You wing it. Come on, look at her. She's fine. <sighs> oh, I'm sorry, honey. Mm -hmm. You go back to bed. I'll be in soon, okay? Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Mom, sweetheart, you're not 
baby four weeks old yet, and already your dad's getting gray hair. Be patient with me, okay? Oh, I'm doing the best I can. Because I love you. You know, it's not like I didn't wonder about the purpose of life before I got married and had a child. I mean, come on, doesn't everybody? But you know, there is something about seeing that little face looking up at you that, well, I'll tell you, it makes finding those answers much more urgent somehow. Now, of course, the hard part is figuring out where to start. I mean, what do you ask and where do you turn? And I don't know, I guess most important, how do you know when you've actually found the truth? My dad. Great guy. I mean, you could ask him a question about anything and he had the answer. You know, I think the greatest lesson I ever learned from him is when I asked him a question that he didn't have the answer to. Hey, Dad. Hey. What you doing? I think this is called puttering in the garage. I'm just finishing up this uh, hutch for your mother. How about you? Okay. Mom thought maybe you need some help here. Well, I'm glad to have you aboard. As a matter of fact, just. Race that corner while I get a couple of screws in here. Okay, hold on. So, how's your life these days? Pretty good. Pretty good? Or pretty good? Well, you know, I mean, uh, things are okay. Well, I don't, well, you know what it is, Dad, is sometimes I start thinking about what a scary place the world is, you know? And uh, all this talk about it going up in a cloud of smoke and... Hey, this is pretty heavy. I brought all this on. Come on, Dad, you read the papers. I mean, it raises a lot of questions. And sometimes uh, I get scared because I don't know what I'm gonna do with my life. Well, the older you get, the harder the questions are. And unfortunately, the tougher it is to find the answers. Well, that's comforting. Oh, hey, look, Sandy, I'm not trying to make fun of you. I wish I had all the answers for you, but even if I did, I'm not gonna be around forever. The thing I've learned, though, is the more important the question, the more the answer comes from your heart. The really important questions or answered here. I don't know if that's profound or naive, but it sure has worked for your mother and me. Hey, I don't know about you, but I'm ready for some supper. <laughs> Sounds good. Oh, and Dad, thanks. Although I didn't think to ask him at the time, the question has come up many times since then. What do you do when your heart says one thing, but your head says something else? Sandy! Oh, hi, honey. How you doing? I can't believe you're not going back to school. Well, what's the matter with you? Sweetheart, I got a job. A job fixing cars? Come on, you just gonna give up like this? Honey, I'm not giving up. What about your education? What about it? You're just quitting. Sweetheart, I'm not quitting my education. I'm just quitting school. Sandy, I hate it when you're clever with me. I am not clever. I'm soaked. Please, come on. <laughs> you are the one that's clever. I mean, you happen to be the most clever, refined lady I know. I mean, that's not me. I'm simpler. You know, I like working with my hands and fixing machines and helping folks out. 
So I'm going to work for a while and then get a job at the technical college later on. What about us? What about us? I don't know. I mean, I thought... I don't know. I thought we kind of had... Well, I just kind of feel that our family is going to need both of us to be whole. You know, I was kind of really under the impression that... Our family? Uh-huh. The one that we're going to make, the two of us, after we're married. Sandy, are you proposing? Uh-huh. Yep. I don't believe it. You really are? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. When two people as different as Sandy and I get married, there's some obvious adjustments. But I'm grateful for the way our different personalities balance each other out. We didn't talk a whole lot about religion until the baby. And then our different backgrounds and personalities really came out. Sandy was more concerned about finding a religion that would help us teach Jennifer how to solve life's daily problems. And I was worried about the eternal nature of things. Now, not that religion was the only thing on our minds, but with the new baby and, and especially Sandy's nightmare, we were searching. So when a friend of ours suggested that we meet with a couple of representatives from her church, we said okay. You know, it was the first time we actually had someone in our home specifically to talk about religion. It was interesting. I'm Elder Johnson. This is Elder Kawamitsu. Hi, Lindsay. Hi. Nice to meet you. Hi. Hi. Everything okay with the baby? Yeah, she's Great. fine. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Oh, sit, please. Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm. So, uh, <laughs> I, I guess, first of all, let me just tell you why that we wanted to see you. Um, okay. I guess it's, it's been our feeling that um, if somebody has something to offer for our family, then we're more than willing to hear what you got to say. Oh, that's really great, Mr. Medford. No. no. Sandy. <laughs> okay. Sandy. Um, well, maybe we should start out by asking you if you have any questions you'd like to ask us. Well, yeah. Um, I, I think there are a couple of questions. Um, uh, first of all, uh, why do you believe what you do? And secondly, how has it made your life better? Well, um, okay, this may not make a lot of sense at first, but I'm a musician. And before I learned about the restored gospel of Jesus Christ, my life was kind of like a piano with only a few keys. I could make music with a few keys, but um, when I learned that there were 88 keys instead of 20, then the, the music I could make was uh, total and full. Does that make any sense? Yeah, yeah, I think so. What about you, Elder? The Restored Gospel has changed my life a lot, too. It was about 10 years ago. I was in my hometown, Okinawa, Japan. And I met two missionaries, just like us. And they talk about the Gospel of the Jesus Christ. And I felt something special. And I pray about it. And now I know that God lives, and He loves us very much. Oh, excuse me, excuse me. Certainly. Sorry. Well, I'll be honest. Part of me was really glad that Jennifer started to cry. I mean, not because they weren't nice or that I wasn't interested in what they were saying. I just, I 
found it all a little overwhelming, and I just need a chance to be by myself and, you know, and think about what they were saying. You know, I'll tell you this, though. I was really amazed how comfortable they were talking about such spiritual things. And, you know, we had them back again for a couple of reasons. First of all, I really liked them, and I, and I liked the way that our home felt when they were there. And secondly, you know, it gave us a chance to talk about spiritual things and religious things that I'd never really get a chance to talk about with other people. It really felt nice. After a, a couple of meetings with these young men, who you should know were representatives of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, I told them I wanted to see how their religion worked in the lives of other families like ours. So they invited us to a church meeting. Oh, sure. Thanks. Here we go. When we were asked a couple of weeks ago if we'd present the program today, our family got together and decided that we should talk about how the restored gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ makes us happy. We'd like to begin today with Emily. She's going to sing a song for us with her mother, and then Rachel will speak to us. And then we'll see how it goes from there. that can teach me to know the things that Heavenly Father wants me to know so that someday I can live again with Him. You know, a lot of people think it's tough being a young person today. And when you look at what's going on in the world, and even in my school, I can see why people say that. I mean, there's drinking, there's drugs, teenage pregnancies, and even suicide in our own community. And all this heartache makes me feel especially sad for my friends who don't really know why they're here, or who they are, or what the future could have to hope for them. But I'm not really sad, and I'm not really scared, because I've been given one of the most wonderful blessings of all, and that's to know right here that there's a meaning and purpose to life. I haven't always known this. My dad's taught me about the gospel since I was a baby, and I was just sort of along for the ride, never really knowing for myself if these things were true. But then we moved here, and my dad said, you can't keep living on borrowed light. And that I'd have to find out for myself if the things my parents had taught me were really true and have my own inner light to guide me. Well, I started reading the Bible, and I started studying about the mission in life of Jesus Christ, and things started touching me. I read the Book of Mormon, another testament of Jesus Christ, and my faith in Him grew even more. And I started listening to what a living prophet had to say, and for the first time in my life, I prayed really hard. And God didn't answer me all at once in loud shouting, but the answers did come in small, tiny ways and whisperings in the heart. Through these experiences, I've, I've found out the 
that this gospel is true. I love it with all my heart, and I wouldn't trade it for the world. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. That old proverb, it is better to see something once than to hear about it a hundred times. Seeing what that family had, that's exactly what I wanted for our family. But to be honest with you, I was a little skeptical, even afraid that anything could be the answer. Guess what my dad said became more apparent than ever. More important to question more the answer comes from the heart. Hi. That's it, girl. Yeah. Hi. How you doing? You got me into something that I don't know how to get myself out of. See, I never would have gotten serious about, I know, all these questions. I didn't have that dream about you. So what I thought I'd do is tell you everything I've been thinking about. Let's see what you think. I've learned that our Heavenly Father has sent us a prophet today. You know, like prophets of old. You see, God is our Father in Heaven, and, and He has a plan for us. So that means we're not alone. Now, now, it, it says here in the Book of Mormon, Faith is like a seed, so that if, if you nurture it and plant it, then it'll grow. He's made it possible for us to live together forever as a family. I guess what it all boils down to, Jenny, is whether or not it's real. Whether all the things I've been telling you about or make believe like scenery on a stage or real. I just gotta know if they're real. The restored gospel of Jesus Christ is real. The truth we all must see has not been Concealed. If we ask prayerfully and look, we will see everything testifies it's real and all the Lord has made and all his works reveal. questions, the more the answers will come from your heart. 
But how will you know if those answers are real like the earth around us or, or make-believe like scenery on a stage? Well, to know the truth, you have to pray. And when you ask your Father in heaven with all your heart, his answers will come. Because through Jesus Christ, our Father has created a plan for families to find peace and happiness. And it is real. If you feel that now is the time for you to learn more about our Heavenly Father's plan and the real happiness it can bring today and forever, talk to a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And no one can deny And every soul will kneel For with his life he tested